Is this the bottom in Aurora stock? That's exactly the question we're gonna be answering today in this Aurora stock analysis video. Aurora is one of many stocks in the green sector that have been absolutely obliterated recently. Canopy, which is the largest player in the space, is down over 77% from its highs. Afria, another big name, is down around 81% from its highs. And Aurora, probably the most popular stock among retail investors, especially here on YouTube, is down over 88% from its highs. Now, after these massive crashes or corrections or whatever you want to call it, it may not be a bad idea to revisit these stocks once again to see if their fundamentals make more sense now at this point for a potential investment. This will give us the answer as to whether it's a good time to buy the stock because we may have found a bottom here or if we're better off just waiting still on the sidelines because there may be more room to fall. Now, as you know from the title of this video, I will be looking at Aurora in particular here today, but if you want to see me do this analysis on some other big players, maybe Canopy, Afria, Tilray, Kronos, any other stock there in this sector, make sure to drop a huge like here because if we get 400 likes on this video, I will continue this series with another stock in the green sector. Now the easiest way to really approach Aurora here and figure out if this is a good stock to buy right now is to look at the most recent earnings report which was actually reported back in November. Their next earnings are actually scheduled for sometime in early March so we're kind of sitting right now in between the two earnings. This gives us a good opportunity to reflect back on what they reported, see where the stock is today, and kind of make some projections as to what we can expect in the next earnings report. This is a quick graphical summary of different aspects of the business, and I like how they laid this out because it lets us see how different aspects or different things are really progressing on a fundamental level. Here I've highlighted two main things, which in my opinion is what's driving a lot of the selling recently. Consumer net revenue and Canadian medical net revenue growth has dropped significantly. So consumer net revenue plunged 33% quarter over quarter, which is a massive drop, especially for a company that is in a growth mode, supposedly. And just for reference, in the same period just one year ago, the same metric had increased by 223% quarter over quarter. But a counter argument could also be said that Aurora was a much smaller company back then. Regardless, a decline in revenue is a red flag for a growth company, especially when it's as significant as 33% down. But guys, there is more to this story and I'll get back to this later on in the video because it may actually not be as bad as it seems. Anyways, next we couple this with the Canadian medical net revenue growth of only 1%, which is more or less negligible. And you have concerns circulating that demand may have peaked here in Canada. What's worse is that this actually relates to both medical and consumer demand. So that raises even more concern. On the flip side, there were some positives here. Their cost to produce every gram decreased substantially, setting themselves up for bigger profits in the future, even if revenue declines. Net selling price increased as well, which is good again for profitability. International revenue increased double digits, so things may be getting started internationally when we're looking at this company as a whole. And active registered patients are increasing still, which may lead to higher revenue growth in the future. So really it's kind of a mixed bag here with this earnings on both the pros, cons, positives, negatives, whatever you want to look at it as. But if I had to pick a side here, I would say that the negatives in this earnings report actually outweighed the positives. Now what we need to do is look at their financials, more specifically their balance sheet, to figure out if what we just saw in the last quarter is something abnormal for the company. And we really need to understand how the company really stands financially to see if they can actually go through a few more bad quarters like this if it comes down to that. First, we look at their cash and investments position. And here things look pretty good. 2019 had a significant increase in the cash position, now sitting at $362 million. However, on the flip side, their long-term debt also increased to $395 million, but they don't have any short-term debt, so this isn't a big concern in the short term. All things considered, it is a fairly stable cash-to-debt ratio here, near one-to-one, -one. so fears of a bankruptcy or things of that nature are not that realistic right now, in my opinion. However, one big elephant in the room is their free cash flow, or lack thereof. Here you can see in 2019, they had negative free cash flow of negative $605 million, which is a high burn rate. And if that continues and it continues at this rate, they could in fact face financial struggles in 2020. Now, if you were to ask me, I would say that this number right here, the negative free cash flow, a significant negative free cash flow, 
was a huge contributor to the selling that we saw in Aurora. Just think about it, if they bring in close to $250 million in revenue, that's not even in profit, and they're burning close to three-fourths of a billion dollars every single year, it's not a very sustainable model. And of course, investors have taken note of this, and you can see that in the stock price, it's down over 88% in a very short period of time. Now, stepping back here, what I do see when I look at Aurora is a business that really invested heavily in their production and their capabilities for the future. And if you're investing in Aurora now or you're invested in the last year or so, you're pretty much making the bet that you think that this company's investments in their production and scaling those operations will pay off in the future. Of course, in the short term, it's gonna hurt the company a ton because they're gonna be expanding, they're gonna be spending a lot of money just to get up to scale. But the hope is that once they are at full 100% production, they will become the biggest player in this space. But now the question is, when will that happen, if ever? Well, that's the million dollar question. As it stands right now, I'm actually personally not as bearish as I was, say, about a year ago in this stock. Now here we can see Aurora's recent earnings and future estimated earnings, and we can see that analysts are not expecting too much here in 2020 from the company. Earnings growth for the most part is in the single digits for the year, and they're not expected to turn a profit at any point this year. So the story doesn't seem to be getting any better at this point, because once again, for a growth company, you need to see massive growth, like in the double digits, which we're not seeing here in Aurora. However, this is just in regards to their earnings, the revenue is looking slightly better than this. Now what I do want to show you here is when looking at their earnings from the last two years, you see that yes, they do consistently miss on revenue expectations. However, they continue to grow their revenue in the hundreds of percent year over year. So maybe that quarter over quarter growth that declined by 33% wasn't such a big deal after all, but that's really up to interpretation. For me personally, I like looking at year-over-year -year growth that gives me a good idea of the company during the same conditions the previous year, ignoring any seasonalities. So it's just a more accurate representation, really, in my opinion, of how a company is growing over time. But again, that's just how I see it. Even at the current stock price, as of recording this video, of $2.11 per share for Aurora, the company is valued at around $2.23 billion. Now, if we take our $250 million in revenue, this means that we're trading at 8.92 times revenue, which is a rich valuation. As a comparison, Afria, one of its closest peers, is trading at a 3.94 times revenue. So here's a good question. Does it make sense to pay around two times more for Aurora versus Afria? Or in other words, is Aurora worth two times as much as Afria? Honestly, if you're asking me this question, I would say the answer is no. Because I don't think that when you look at the fundamentals of Aurora versus Afria, that it justifies a 2x multiple. And guys, this is after an 88% correction in the stock. I can't even imagine how investors were able to justify the valuation when the stock was trading near $12 per share. That was just absolutely insane and in hindsight was a perfect textbook bubble situation. So the big question, of course, we loop back around here, is Aurora stock bottomed out at these prices? Well, I think for the very short term, this may indeed be the bottom for the stock, and we may not see prices below $1.50 again until the next earnings report. I suspect they will continue to post good revenue growth year over year in the next quarter. However, the market will be looking closely at that free cash flow burn rate as well. Because like we discussed guys in this video, they really need to stop bleeding as much cash as they are right now. Because at a fundamental level, that's really what's going to keep this business afloat over the longer term. I would not be surprised really to see a short term rally back to the $4 to $5 range. But at this point, it's still anyone's guess as to how high we can really go in the stock before investors feel that it's a bubble once again. For me personally, if we can get to around a four to five times multiple versus their revenue, which will put the company around a one to $1.25 billion market cap, I would be much more comfortable and much more interested in actually investing in the stock at those levels if we ever see those levels. But as it stands today, Aurora is not a stock for me. It may have bottomed here and it may be a great play for a short-term bounce. But you guys know that I'm not a short-term investor, I'm a long-term investor, so this is not a stock that I'll be putting any money into right now. 
Guys, remember, if you want to see more videos of stocks in this sector, drop a like down below. If we can get 400 likes on this video, I will continue the series with either, I will continue the series with another big player in this space. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to invest positively and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.